So, okay. Unmani, first of all, thank you for giving us the opportunity to make this interview for Jetzt TV, which is a German portal. Uh, we are doing interviews with many people. You have been to Germany, you have been to the Rainbow Spirit Festival, I believe, or at least you have yes. met with Deva Setu. And mm -hmm. I have seen many videos with you already on the internet, uh, either on YouTube and, and other portals, so thank you for your being present in the internet. It was very helpful mm. for me. Thank you, yeah. And mm. um, I'm particularly curious just to start with a question. What is your core message? What do you have to say? Can you elaborate a little bit on this one? Well, really, um, I'm pointing to who I am, and not not when I say I, I'm not talking about who I am personally. I'm not talking about Unmani. I'm talking about who you are, which is the same as who I am. Um, and uh, we so often overlook that in our in our lives. Um, because we we assume that our thinking and our beliefs are um, so meaningful, so we overlook the reality of that that actually who who I am is the only thing that is of any importance, and everything else is just appearing in that. So really, uh, in the meetings and the retreats that I run, um, we are questioning the reality of beliefs and concepts and attitudes, fears and hopes and dreams, um, and seeing that actually underneath that, before that, all around that, actually who you are doesn't care about those beliefs and concepts and hopes and dreams. It is absolutely perfect, whole, free, love, everything that we ever long for. But it, it uh, can't be understood and grasped by the thinking. So that's really, yeah. So how can it be grasped and understood <laughs> <laughs> well it can't it can't be you see because it's not an object you know, we're actually talking about literally nothing so of course the mind doesn't know what to do with nothing and what's the point of nothing you know but as a concept nothing just sounds like nothing. <laughs> it sounds boring uh, or depressing. Um, but actually, when, when you recognize the, the absence, the nothing that you are right now, you recognize that actually it's not a boring, depressing thing at all. It's full of life right now. So and, how, uh, yeah. how can anything that you call nothing be full of life right now? It doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really this, you know, to the mind this is just craziness. It doesn't mean anything, you know. And why would I even want nothing? You know, why would I go searching for nothing? What do I get out of that? Yeah. Well, I really, I, I ask people um, in the meetings and retreats, are you willing to die to everything that you think you know? You know, f for everything that you've ever longed for. Are you really willing to die? You know, because while you're still holding on to your old ways of thinking and, and believing, there's no space to actually recognize what is beyond that. So that's why, you know, I ask people that. And um, of course, people don't know how to die. 
you know, the mind comes in and says, well, okay, how do I do that? Maybe I'm willing, but show me the way, you know, <laughs> give me a method, a practice, and, and I don't give any practice or methods. It's simply through investigating now what is real, what you actually know, that actually who you are becomes obvious that, in fact, you've always known that. You have to have always known that because it's you. So it's in a recognition, not an understanding, not a grasping. That grasping of the thinking will never actually get what it wants. It will never be fulfilled. So it's only frustrating to hear this message from from the mind, you know. <laughs> so <I'm> just trying <laughs> to <laughs> so, so it cannot be got, it cannot be grasped. No. <laughs> it, no. So it can only be, well, become clear when all falls away. <laughs> and, ev and even the waiting for it all to fall away is just a way of looking at it from the mind. Imagining a future point when one day it's all fallen away. You, know, you don't have to wait for that moment. So because it is already, despite all the thinking and the beliefs that are there, so it's so we don't have to we don't have to um, make all of those uh, beliefs and concepts go away before we can recognize this. We can recognize this right now and see those beliefs and concepts for the for what they really are, simply beliefs and concepts, they're not real. So, knowing who I am, is there a risk that any answer that would come there can also only be a concept? Yes, of course. The mind is very uh, clever <laughs> and, and uh, kind of sneaky. You know, it can imagine some spiritual concept and fool itself into thinking that you understand it, you know, or that you've got something, you've realized something, when actually it's, um, it's just an imagination. So when you say you are nothing or I am nothing and you and me are the same, so nothing basically, yeah? so and that's already a word and uh, a concept comes with it. Yes. Yeah. But this points to the, to, to, <laughs> to no concept at all. Yes. That's what you mean. Oh, that's how one could try to put it into words. Yeah, yeah. The, the words don't do it justice, you know. Every word is wrong. Because we're pointing to something that is not an object. And the nature of words is that they describe objects in all forms, you know, even the most subtle objects are still objects. You know, what we're pointing to is not an object, it's not a feeling, it's not an understanding, in fact it's not any kind of experience. It is some kind of a non-touching anything situation. <laughs> you see how you see how sweetly the mind tries to grasp it. You know? Okay, so it's a non-touching kind of thing, and it tries to imagine it. You know, how can you imagine literally nothing? What could you imagine? Like a black, a black space, maybe. Yeah, but but, but this it's not. Still, it's, still is a, it's not that. It's a picture. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, it's not that. It's literally absence of anything. It's death. You know, that's what we're pointing to. We're talking about death. 
you are death. I am death. You know, that is that is who you are. It's a funny thing because you know we're usually so afraid of dying. We're afraid of talking about death. We're tr afraid of one day this body's going to die. But actually, recognizing your true nature is recognizing death right now. You know, you may have heard like uh, waking up is a, a kind of dying before you die. I have heard this, and um, my my experience is that it, oh, my experience is that it's beyond even death and life. Huh? So it's it's. Yes. I, 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 Death and life don't make don't make sense. This is uh, just just yes. concepts again. So silence, uh, or, or or even not even silence, because silence also imposes there is something out of silence. Uh, yeah. This. Yes. I mean, like I said, every word is wrong. You know? <laughs> it doesn't say it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We 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 just are playfully using words to attempt to point in that. You know, to it, but that's why I say it's a recognition. You know, the, these words either resonate with you, or they're just an understanding conceptually. You know, so if they resonate, then that's that's what I mean by recognition. There's some kind of a resonance, <laughs> resonant, resonating. Yeah, that's the best way one can potentially put it, I believe. Yeah. And yeah. so you you have give open satsangs. You have. Open satsangs where everybody can attend. Uh, somehow, I, I don't know. You're traveling around the world, and you also give uh, retreats, which I assume are, are longer exercises. Uh, yes. And yes, I, I give uh, week-long retreats or ten-day. I'm doing uh, one coming up in November in Costa Rica for ten days. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy the longer retreats because uh, I really feel that. Um, it's it creates kind of like a pressure cooker, you know, mm -hmm. where where people <laughs> uh, have come there, they've made the the commitment uh, to be there for that amount of time, and uh, together as a group, usually it's quite a, a, a relatively small, intimate group, and um, we feel. Um, you know, uh, quite safe with the group uh, to to really explore what is real, you know. And sometimes within that, a lot of uncomfortable uh, emotion and sensation is experienced because for so long we've been hiding behind either spiritual concepts of, or other concepts um, in order to avoid actually feeling a lot of uncomfortable stuff. So when we start to see the reality of those concepts, um, we see that they actually cannot protect us against feeling, then the feelings start to be felt. And it's a safe kind of container together to feel those feelings and know that they don't mean anything about who you are. You know, because who you are just notices those feelings. So that's what we do on retreats. You know. So here comes the idea when you talk about feelings and things that we try to hide, uh, trauma, trauma. Yeah, so might might appear. Uh, yeah. Can they be some? Can they be um, dissolved during such retreats? Well, actually, um, I find that. In recognizing who you are, there's a recognizing that actually um, every belief, every feeling, every trauma doesn't belong to me. You know, it, it doesn't mean it's not felt and experienced fully in the, in the painful way that it is, but it doesn't belong to me. And recognizing that fully actually takes some of the drama away from it. You know, it's still felt as a sensation, as an emotion, but uh, without that extra story of me, it has the freedom to be there, to be fully felt, 
and, and even to be there forever, you know, because it doesn't mean anything about me. So it's welcome to be there forever. Who does it even upset? Who does it, who does it hurt even, you know? And then I noticed that actually in that absolute welcomeness for it to be there f maybe forever, then there is also the freedom for it to maybe not be there forever. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter anymore, huh? It doesn't matter whether it's there or whether it's not. Mm. You know, because who actually cares? Who needs it to dissolve? <laughs> <laughs> it's only the thinking, the mind that, that would say, I want it to, to dissolve. You know, I have this spiritual idea that all of my traumas, all my problems, all my beliefs should dissolve. And then, one, then when that happens, then I'll be free. Mm -hmm. but what, I'm, what I'm saying is actually, right now, you are freedom itself. And in that, these problems and beliefs and fears and all of that appear. But they're not yours, so they're free to just be there. Why not? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> that's freedom you know we're really talking about freedom that includes everything yeah. it hasn't got um, any limitations you know it doesn't say I don't like trauma you know that's not included in freedom it includes free, uh, trauma as well as all the nice and comfortable loving beautiful stuff you know it includes the whole spectrum of life whether we like that idea or not you know <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> I believe that's the way it is. Huh? <laughs> that is the way it is, and and you know, the sooner we realize that, the easier it is. Actually, you know, while we're fighting with reality and saying, "I don't want this pain, I don't want this fear, yeah. you know, it shouldn't be here," then there's just an extra kind of fighting going on. But actually recognizing or facing the reality that, yes, this is here now. Deal with it. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. There's no escape from pain. Mm -hmm. That's life, you know. Mm -hmm. It's only going to get worse as we get older. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, may as well face it and feel it now. And yeah. see that actually it's not as frightening or painful as we imagine. Mm. It's just simply a sensation in appearing in you. Yeah, even this in you uh, would imply there is something where it could appear in. Uh, but I think we are talking even beyond that. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, but that's, you know, you could imagine, if you use the imagination again, you might be imagining a, a kind of a container, of, yes. w which we're calling you, yeah. but that's that's using the imagination again. That's exactly you know? Yeah, we don't need to bother with imagination, it's too much effort yeah. to imagine that. That's why you we say, can just go on. death or nothing, yeah? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. It's a recognition of the death that you are right now, that is beyond any concept of me and my life, or one day I'm going to die, or one day I'm going to wake up. It's recognizing this right now. So this is so, at least in my memory, so bloody far away from the day-to-day -day experience of many. Yeah? So, so on the other hand, it is freedom, and it is it is it is liberating when when this uh, vision can be taken. Or I don't know how to how to how to express it in words. Uh. Yeah, but you see, actually, um, what we're talking about includes whatever happens in the daily life. You see, when you say, "Oh, it's not it's not your daily experience," but actually, we're not talking about it, any kind of experience. So even. If there's lots of thinking, for example, even if there's stress and tension and, and emotion, that is included as well. You know, recognizing who you are, you recognize that actually who you are just simply notices everything happening in your da daily life as well. 
whether there's an experience of peace or an experience of craziness. Who cares? So this all is, sounds so very simple. <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's the thing, you know, usually uh, we, we don't want it to be so simple. We want something really complicated. You know, so that we can say, oh, I achieved it, and I worked so hard to get here. So, and, and, and yeah, and if I've achieved it, then I'm really special. So when, I, when I talk about such, yeah, let's go, when I say sentences like the ones that we exchange now a little bit at my workplace, uh, then I see a lot of questions in the faces, and, and uh, this cannot be true. Uh, so this, this kind of vision um, it's just it's just a vision a, a direction of looking at I don't know I cannot put it in other words yeah, it's, yeah, it's just it's not difficult with the words not 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 resisting against what is maybe that that's yeah. uh, that's uh, a summary of, of all this uh, and uh, even feeling the resistance including the resistance yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah life, sure life includes resistance yeah, 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 yeah. but <laughs> It is so simple. It is. It is in yeah. the end. It is so simple, but it is not uh, uh, general knowledge. Yeah? And uh, no. many people go through long processes to somehow s see this, even though there is nobody who would see this eventually. Finally, yeah. yeah? so you know that. Let's let let's use language. Yeah? So as language, but not as as pointing to the truth at the moment. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so, what are the first steps to to sh 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 shift the vision, to shift the directions of looking? What, what what are your recommendations to start with? Or <laughs> to enter it's into this? It's a joke, really, isn't it? You know? I mean, what what kind of a question is that? You know, it's like <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, how would you? Why would you need any steps? To to be who you are. It's impossible, huh? But yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yet, you know, it can seem so complicated and so difficult when you're trying to figure it out. And I see people coming from that point of view, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's it can seem just so impossible. And yet, you know, actually what we're pointing to is who you are already. It's not that you need to somehow achieve something other than you are, some other state. You know, the simplicity is recognizing, oh, I'm already here. Of course I'm here. This is, you know, of course I'm alive. You know, that's all we're talking about. At the same time, we say we are death. No? We are nothing. No? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. You know? it, it's a paradox, you know. This is death playing at being alive. Yeah. <laughs> it's one way of saying it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we know this already, you know. It, it, a lot of people uh, maybe have, a, have had an, uh, a kind of experience of, of maybe um, kind of feeling like the whole of life is, is a bit of a joke. But they don't really know what to do with that knowing that that feeling, or maybe like the sense that who they really are haven't hasn't grown up, even though they they may have grown up and they're <laughs> they're in their fifties, sixties, seventies, whatever. Actually, who they are is is still a child, you know, has never changed or been touched by the fact that the body seems to have grown up. Yeah, how could it? I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's beyond time, you know. It's beyond everything. It's simply noticing everything happen. Mm -hmm. And and so, in a way, you know, it's it is a kind of a shifting in a sense in this recognizing, because we so often take ourselves to be uh, limited to someone located in a body. You know. Um, and we assume that the edge of who who I am is the edge of my skin. Yeah. We assume that, that that's that's our boundary. Yeah, and uh, and so others, another person, is outside of us in some separate bag of skin. <laughs> um, 
And actually, what I'm saying is quite radically different to that. It's, it's kind of turning that inside out. So in fact, the sensation that you might feel on your skin is not the boundary of you. That sensation is, in fact, felt in you. So, so the, the location that we believe we are is in fact not located in there. It's not in that bag. There isn't a bag. You know, the, <laughs> the sensation is in you. So it's completely the other way around to, to, to the way we normally assume, you know, what we normally believe about ourselves. And then other people are visual appearances in you. You know? And then if you, if you touch them, then there's a sensation appearing in you, just like when you touch your own hand. Mm -hmm. yeah? and, and when you sense some sense of another person, or you can empathize with another person, so that sense is appearing in you as well. In fact, there are no other people, because it's all in you. So we, we always know this, it's just... Somehow we complicate it, so and, the, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, even not any people at all, basically. Yeah? <laughs> no, you could say that that you're absolutely alone. <laughs> There's no one here but you. Yeah, but uh, but as who then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. You, you know, it's not you who you think you are, because that would that would be interpreted by the mind as being, oh, that's terribly lonely. But I'm all alone. <laughs> Yeah, but you're not you're not alone in that lonely way. You're alone, and everyone is appearing in you, including who you think you are. Yeah, <laughs> including this body. You know, is this body is also appearing in you? Yeah. This this thing is appearing in me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's recognized, or it's not. You know. Oh, and if it's not, then it's just some mental game. And if it is, then it's so simple. Then we laugh, and that's it. It's not some, you know, big awakening, or now I'm enlightened, or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, you never arrive anywhere. Because if you believe that I've, I've now got it, you know, I've arrived, I'm awakened now, then it's actually simply believing in thought again. You know, it's, it's believing in a label, that I have arrived. I've, I, this experience now means something about me. Mm -hmm. But how could you ever possibly know that you've arrived anywhere without believing in thought again? Mm -hmm. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite disappointing for the spiritual seeker. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> because the, the spiritual seeker wants to arrive somewhere. The spiritual seeker wants to get enlighten, enlightened. You know, he wants to wants to get the final prize after all the years of hard work. Mm. But there is no prize because the prize is already here. Always has been. It always will be. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cannot be other than that. <laughs> the problem with it being so simple is that we run out of words. <laughs> yeah, 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 but this is the natural state then, uh, because yeah. any word is then back to thought again. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that's left is a laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so in your retreats you laugh a lot, I assume. <laughs> yeah. yeah, usually about the, the, the first half of it is quite intense. And uh, a lot of stuff comes up from pe for people, like I said, and then about halfway things start changing and opening, and we start laughing and playing. We play a lot, you know. There's um, 
yeah, we play with each other. We play in a very creative way. Um, yeah, I get people to do all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> 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 do you do you do things like 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 such dynamic meditations and and such no. stuff or not? No, 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 no meditations, nothing formal like that at all. Um, we just um, we paint, we dance, um, we dress up in all kinds of crazy clothes, uh, and we make our own outfits and we. Well, I can't even think of all the other things we do. I mean, yeah, and it, you know, we also make up new things to do each time. You know. We play like children because that's what we really want to do. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, boundaries. We've been, uh. Yeah, we've we've been um, pretending to be grown up for too long. You know, it's, it's so boring and uh, tiring. You know, we just we all long to just play and let it all go. So yeah, we, it's a kind of uh, combination of sitting in meetings together and exploring some of that quite intense stuff that is there to be felt and seeing the reality of those beliefs and concepts. Mm. And, then, and then also doing some of these crazy things, these crazy playful things that um, sometimes trigger more stuff for people and then we talk about it again in the meetings and and sometimes it's just simply playful and light and we just start feeling more and more free um, yeah and by the end of the retreat um, it's not that people are so fully free that then that's it they've, they've arrived at some place but it's that um, there is somehow uh, more of a, a spaciousness to actually keep seeing beliefs and concepts for what they really are, to keep feeling in your daily life the reality of these uncomfortable sensations that can come up you know, and see that this too doesn't mean anything about me. And it's a never-ending unraveling that happens in life. And a retreat is just a beautiful introduction to the rest of your life. Mm. Sometimes people come back again and again to retreats um, for more exploration. You know, mm. it's because in a way, it's really that it's an exploration into what is true, what you really know beyond thinking. Mm. I had personally also some some stuff, and somehow I came in. To the this path, I believe, or whatever it is, uh, this this state, and there were some un uncomfortable things and trauma stuff. Uh, and what I found so far, when going into it and investigating it, in the end, I always find if there is any strange state or, or pain, uh, it's all. It's uh, at the end, there is a thought. It should be different. Uh. And and yeah. when when this, I, I had this three or four times, and then I say, yeah, the, the pain is not necessary. It's just there must be an erroneous thought. It is it is it is it should be different. Huh? That's that's yeah. my experience. Huh, over yeah, and that that thought it should be different is really it's it's based in this belief that it should be different for me. You know, that's really the continuation of that thought. Yes. I. I want it to be different because this um, uncomfortable experience means something about me. It means mm -hmm. that I'm not I'm not fully there yet. I'm not fully uh, awakened or uh, whatever you believe. Yeah, it's just a belief. Yeah? A, a belief is running. It's not okay in the way it is. Yeah? Yeah. So and that creates the, the uncomfortable situation. Yeah? Uh, that's the only cause for un uncomfortable situations. Huh? Well, well, I mean, there may be um, some pain, let's say, some emotion that comes up, but there's usually an extra layer around that pain that is uh, kind of a layer of drama, uh, a layer that that makes this pain mean something about me, and it's it's that layer that is the real troublemaker. 
not the pain itself. Yeah, but I'm, I'm distinguishing between f physical pain, so something from coming from the body, and and let's call it mental pain or discomfort. Huh? And I'm talking mental pain. I mean, physical pain. If you cut your hand, then there will be pain. Uh, so I'm I, talking about mental pain or yes. emotional pain as well. It's the yes. same thing. Yes. It's exactly the same thing. Yes. You see. Because there can sometimes be some emotion that is felt, yeah, and even a, a thought story around it. But none of that means anything about you. And when I come to, I, I have the, the the observation that emotions are created by some kind of judgment mechanisms. That, that's how I can express it. So there are certain beliefs that this is normal and this is better and this is worse. And when there is a delta from normal, then uh, when it's in the positive direction, then a good feeling comes. When it is in the negative direction, a bad feeling comes. And, and somehow over time this all, when seen through, when seen through, it, it gets more peaceful. That's, that's yes, but it, it, but you can't manufacture that. You see, no. uh, when <laughs> yeah, when when there's an emotional story, um, some some belief or some judgment, that is absolutely okay to be there. It doesn't mean anything about you. It doesn't mean that you are judgmental. Yes. No. Judgment is happening. Yeah. It's just happening. You're not, you're not in control of it. You didn't do something wrong. Yes. You know, <laughs> it's just <laughs> happening, um, and that's what I mean. You know, it doesn't mean anything about you. So if you find that that thought comes up with some kind of judgment, and then there's an emotion that follows with that, none of that is your fault. No, it's just the way it is. It it's happens. just the way it is. Yeah. So um, it. But the belief that oh I shouldn't be judging, that's yes. why I'm that's why I'm feeling this pain because I'm judging. You know that belief is the troublemaker. You know because if that belief makes this judgment mean something about me, it it means that I'm not good enough because I'm judging. You know, I'm not spiritual enough or open yeah, enough. I, I get the point, yeah. Yeah. I, I get the point. Yeah. yeah this is so if it's free to be there, if this judgment's just okay to be there, you know, because the nature of thought is to be judging a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 That's just the way it is. It's not you. You're not judgment. Yeah, you, you are just simply noticing thought. Exactly. Yeah, so noticing the judgment. Yeah? yeah, the thought sometimes it judges, and with that comes an emotion sometimes, and it can be painful. Sure, it's not, it's not your fault. You know, it's about recognizing that this too is not you. It's nothing to do with you. It doesn't mean anything. And actually, recognizing again and again that this too doesn't mean anything about me. That the byproduct of that is that the judging and the emotion and all of that does seem to. Uh, lesson, mm -hmm. but if you're trying to do this to make it lesson, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't work. Eh? That, that, yeah. it, it automatically comes. Eh? Then, uh, yeah. That's my experience. Eh? So it's yeah, somehow... so, so that's why I'm saying that there is absolute freedom for there to be judgment, freedom for there to be discomfort, pain, fear, you know, any thought story. You know, any belief is free to be there. Mm. You know? And in our, in the meetings and retreats that I run, it's not about saying, "Oh, you know, you shouldn't believe that." It's seeing, "Oh, okay, there's that belief there," and uh, and that belief is simply a belief. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to be there, but it's a joke. You know, it doesn't mean anything. Because who is it talking about even? Who is it referring to? So that's in those investigations and dialogues that we have, we're kind of shining a light on these beliefs and seeing the reality of them without trying to change anything. It's totally free to be there and to continue being, being believed even. 
Yeah, just shining lights on these belief systems and belief structures, yeah, and see yeah. them see them as what they are. Yeah. yeah, that's all. And then, actually, I noticed that something happens on its own, but you don't need to get involved. You don't need to try to change anything. And not, life naturally wants to open and open. That seems to be the, the nature of life, that it can't help but just fall in love with itself more and more and open and open and open it wants more and more freedom you know that just seems to be the nature of it so if a light is shined on one of these restricting beliefs then it, the reality is seen that it, and it's seen that actually there is no restriction there it's just a believed in re restriction oh I'm already free of course I am how ridiculous <laughs> And then it kind of works its own magic. Yeah, you don't need then, to bother. Yeah, and then another belief might come, yeah? and then yeah. same game, yeah, yeah, same yeah. game. Yeah, that's get more that's why I say, that's why I say it's a, a kind of never-ending unraveling. You mm. never arrive anywhere. You, it's a continual losing everything that you've ever believed in. Yeah. yeah? And never ever arriving anywhere. <laughs> Do you travel to India? Do are you one of those persons who go to Tiruvannamalai in the winter time, or I um, I haven't normally done that, but actually it, it's funny that you should ask because I I've, I've just arranged to go there um, <laughs> th this January. Yeah, okay. yeah, I plan to be there for two weeks, um, holding meetings. Uh, yeah, in Tiruvannamalai, and I've never done that before, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a searching period like many seekers had or have? So I hear of stories people go for decades uh, or no, that's what we hear, yeah? so what I hear. So did you have such a period or? Well, um, in a way you could say that I did, but I, I, I really recognize this as a child. Yeah. And um, and then I, I guess I, I I thought that there was something wrong with me because I didn't know how to be in the world really. I didn't know how to be a person. Um, I I didn't uh, I didn't believe in this relative world. Um, and when I saw other people taking this world so seriously I assumed that I had a problem you know, that there must have been something missing with me that uh, I didn't find an identity and so I went in search of an identity oh the other way around then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is an, this is an interesting one <laughs> yeah 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 and of course, I never found a perfect identity. I, I tried a few. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah I never found one. But this must be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, in recognizing that actually who who I am has been always here, you know, never needed an identity. That was what happened for me. That really, it was. Um, a relaxation in that search for an identity. You know, oh, I don't need to find an identity. I don't need to ha ever have an identity. Mm. You know, I'm, I am life itself. I don't need to squash myself into some limited identity. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somehow this 
searching dynamics itself is the problem, no matter from which direction one searches. <laughs> yeah, and it can start very young, you know, the searching. <laughs> Not necessarily spiritually, but I see, you know, people tell yeah, me people all kinds of stories, yeah. Yeah, sure, you don't know who you are, then you ask your parents, who am I, what about death, and then the whole <laughs> yeah, drama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The stage is prepared, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nobody knows, and you're not happy with the answer, and <laughs> there must be more, and yeah, I'm yeah. not good enough, and oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just ideas, just ideas. Yeah. Fear of death, body dies, body will die. What about that one? Yeah, I, get, I, I hear, you know, people say that the body will die. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. See, yeah. no, it's another imagination that that could be a problem. Then. What's that? It's, it's another imagination or idea yeah. that that could be a problem. Yeah, yeah. Mind is a great inventor. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, yeah, but you know, it's so creative. Yeah. Endless creation. Beautiful, actually. The creation of various problems, you know. Not even scenarios. Yeah. I mean, scenarios and... It superimposes a reality and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah. And yet a fantastic tool to solve yeah. problems, uh, to keep this body alive. Yeah. Huh? Absolutely amazing. Yeah. So often people think that I'm being very uh, down on the mind, you know, that, uh, that somehow you know, the mind has no place, but actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. you know? The nature of thought is is to think and to create and to classify and to imagine and dream and you know and it's amazing how it does that. It's just useless when it comes to recognizing who you are. Mm. <clears throat> but with everything else, it's fantastic. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally loose, useless for recognizing who you are. Yeah. Always thoughts come, so try to come, but at the moment <laughs> nothing manifests, nothing. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we could always stop there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. When I take the old perspective, I studied physics in my life, and then I try to get into that one. <laughs> well, it's, it's all. We are trapped by this mind, or by these these structures somehow, and that's that's what comes. Uh, but that, again, this is concept. Uh, this is concept again. Concepts, yeah. concepts, concepts, concepts. Yeah. Nothing of it is real. Complication. Yeah. Yeah. It's much more simple than that. Mm, just mm. this silence. I, I think that's the best pointer. <laughs> Could not yeah. find a better one. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but you know, you'd be surprised how people get confused even by the silence. People can complicate the silence, you know, and assume that the silence somehow means something. Yeah, that's what happens, like, in this conversation, we, we, it naturally, I feel pulled into that now. Uh, yeah. No dynamics at the moment, uh, so mm. silence comes. But it doesn't have a meaning, it's just a resting, right? Yeah, just a resting, literally. 
Yeah. Yeah. What I experienced with, with friends and colleagues, uh, back the proposal, I just tried to sit silent for 15 minutes or half an hour doing nothing. Yeah? It's just like a torture. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, also if you f if you kind of force yourself to sit doing nothing, then uh, the nature of the mind that it just is that it just wants to do something. Yeah. But if it if it kind of just comes naturally, there's natural moments where there's just a natural feeling to rest and not speak or just not move. Or... Mm. So actually, meditation, like the actual practice of meditation isn't really necessary as a as a practice it kind of ca happens naturally you know the body naturally kind of comes to a resting point every so often and if you if, if you're willing to listen to it you know. yeah but that's this if yeah. Yeah, that that's 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 not uh, not um, general practice huh? so mm. <laughs> somehow there is the impression that uh, one should be busy, one should use the time, one should work or yeah. do something or read something or whatever. Yeah? So mm. this inactive state is, is not propagated yeah. <laughs> often. Yeah. It's not very useful. You're not going to achieve very much like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and just to be clear, we're not talking about not achieving. You know, yes. in your in your daily life at work or whatever you do, uh, you can go on doing everything you do, and mm -hmm. being very busy even, and and using the mind to organize things or to plan things or whatever it is that it takes. And because mm -hmm. people often can hear this as some kind of attitude of I shouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's not that. You can go on ev doing everything as you do, and recognizing who you are is recognizing that actually who you are is noticing this person doing what it does. You know? This person playing the role of whatever know, yeah. a, a banker, a fireman, a mm -hmm. dancer, a, you know, teacher, or whatever. Yeah. With all intensity, yeah, with all intensity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of potential for misunderstanding all this. Mm. Sure. When the mind is trying to understand it, then, of course, it misunderstands it. Just imagining one of your retreats, painting, playing, <laughs> discussing, asking yeah. questions. So you have satsang sessions in that? Where yeah, every day, uh, every um, like during the day. Although we have some free time yeah. uh, in the afternoons, usually to just relax. But um, the mornings are full uh, everyday uh, meeting sessions and also some of the evenings, most of the evenings, certainly in the in the beginning. And then um, towards the end, we start to use more and more afternoon and evening time to, to play. But we continue the mornings with the meetings okay. right to the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these meetings are for clarifications of questions, or do yes. you have a, a, some kind of a teaching style, or is it just what comes in the, in the group, yeah. it's it's what comes, um, and it does seem to have its own uh, kind of momentum in some way. Um, 
yeah, I don't plan anything, and yet mm. it does. It does sometimes seem perfectly planned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. It's just this resonating thing. Yeah. <laughs> Seems yeah, to be. And, and of course, the the different members of the group bounce off each other. Mm. So, so if, uh, one one person can. Um, bring up something and uh, and it can affect somebody else mm -hmm. and then it, it kind of brings up a whole other area to explore and uh, are there any prerequisites uh, for attend for going to your retreats do you select people or do is everybody invited well I usually would prefer that someone had, has already been to one of my meetings mm -hmm. um, but nowadays in this modern age of, uh, of YouTube and mm -hmm. all that then usually people come who have uh, already seen YouTube clips yeah. Uh, yeah so really it's open to anybody but I do ask people to write a couple of sentences about why they um, what they expect out of the retreat and, and what drew them to come to the retreat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one would write a letter to you or an email or whatever, contact you and then you come with the questions and then... Well, no, not really like that. It's um, when you book for the retreat, part oh. of the book, booking form, there's oh. a little section where you fill mm -hmm. out um, what has drawn you to come and mm -hmm. uh, expect out of it. Mm -hmm. And you do that on in different locations in the world? You travel around the world or do, or do you have uh, special preferred locations? I did not follow your schedules so far. Um, I, I, I travel, I don't have a base at all so I'm always traveling, it's just okay. the way things are. And um, yeah, I don't have a set route. Um, things seem to, you know, so different happen. Yeah, different travel plans seem to come up, but it's it's always on my website sometime in advance. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, I've recently changed my website. I don't know if you saw that. It's uh, it was uh, for a long time. It's been not knowing. dot com, yeah. and now um, it's die to love. dot com. <laughs> yeah. So you also say oh, this implies love is, is is the essence or something like that. So. Yeah, well, I like using the word die or death and mm -hmm. love in, in the same sentence mm -hmm. because it's the same thing. Dying mm -hmm. to everything you think you know for the love that you are, for the openness that you are, the freedom that you are. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I've changed the website really to kind of suit the natural evolution of this expression. Okay. I've, you know, I've been doing these meetings and retreats for I think about eight or nine years now and um, in the last couple of years it seems to have just intensified and um, yeah, got more un uncompromising um, and so the, the website now reflects that better. Than it, okay, than it, so the, we'll have a look at it soon. Yeah. Ah, so that's that's an invitation. <laughs> yeah, I <love> my website. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I really enjoy. I really like the design of it now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, love is then obviously used in a different way than mm, it is used in all day language for many years. Yeah? So. Because love somehow implies there are two. Yeah. yeah, I'm not talking about any experience of love. I'm talking about who you are. So love is another word for that. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. As you said before, every word is wrong. Mm. So even the word love doesn't really say it, you know. It can be quite confusing to use that word 
for some people. People can assume that it means some kind of experience or as if we're talking about relationships. Yeah. But it's actually, it's really the same thing. Love, I, I like using the word love because it points to the fact that everything is included. Yeah. Unconditionally. Unconditionally, I mean, this is the quality that yeah. I think is closest to what we try to point to. Uh, yeah. so that's also my baseline when I think about love, the, the quality of being unconditional. That's, in the yeah. end of the day, in the partnership also, what counts uh, and yeah. to come to that unconditional yeah, but you can't manufacture that. You see, you can't yeah. try. You can't try to be unconditionally loving. Yes, it's I know. it's it's not in the nature of the mind. Yeah, see, the mind possible. will never be unconditionally loving. The yeah. mind will only be conditionally loving. What can I get out of this relationship? You know, it's always about negotiating, and that's the nature of the thinking. But who you are is always unconditional love no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just is. Yeah, so it even, just is. And there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, even, <laughs> yeah, even no hope to do anything no. about it. That's uh, <laughs> the bad. Yeah. side of, of, of the story, but the good side of the story is uh, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, and it's a relief that you don't need to do anything about yeah. it. Yeah. 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 What I sense um, at a certain stage is instead of calling it love or uh, somehow would, would rather call it bliss or something like that. Yeah? So, um, but this sounds again like an experience, which <laughs> yeah. again is not. Okay. It. Yeah. That word bliss is a very confusing word as well, see, because yes. it implies some kind of blissful experience. Yeah. 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 And and then it means it implies that somehow any uncomfortable frightening or painful experience is not it because it's yes, not exactly blissful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. what I what I saw at one stage is uh, when one calls it bliss that was an interesting game of, of, of mind um, uh, the highest state one can be in as, as a human being is, is a blissful state yeah which is of course an experience with it, which is limited which causes drama yeah yeah but uh, it can be a reflection. Yeah? So when one considers it as a reflection of what we really are, yeah? then that also can be a pointer. Yeah? But it is always on the level of an experience and it is not relevant at all. Yeah? That experience yes. is not relevant at all. Yes, and even, let's say, just, just to play kind of yeah, sure. de devil's advocate with, with you now, uh, or just to pose the opposite, uh, if you take anger, that is also a reflection of who you are, mm -hmm. in in the power of it, in the vibrancy of anger. That too is a is is a reflection of of who you are. Life itself exploding in anger. Mm. <laughs> it is all a reflection, you know. So we killed all of them, yeah. <laughs> or allow all of them, we allow all of them. Yeah? yeah, it's all allowed already, whether you allow it or not. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to play with this. <laughs> yeah. So these devil's advocate games, they are... Clarifier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's always looking looking at the other side of the paradox, you know. So now we are almost almost in a retreat. Huh? <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah.
I believe the dynamics is coming to rest for this time. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. yeah. So thanks a lot for this conversation. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we will produce it and hopefully release it in the very near future. That's great. Yeah, let me know when that, that is and I'll link to it on my website. Okay. Yeah. Great. So have a great time in, I believe you are in California, in San Francisco? Yes, yes I am. Hopefully yeah. no earthquakes. No. <laughs> <laughs> that could be dramatic. Uh, I hope it will not happen. Uh, so. And have a great time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, nice to talk to you. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. Cheers oh. then. Bye-bye.